if the king will say the name, it shows in the mind of the ancient Egyptian that he is the right one to go. He is the pure one. He is the magical one. And if he will say it, he will go through. This is why they write it so carefully in the text. Said he was supposed to learn the names by reading them on the walls of his tomb. And now, his journey depends on it. When he utters the name, they retreat. And he can pass. But before the night is done, he'll have to pass 11 more gates, facing demons bent on his destruction. To destroy the Pharaoh is to destroy the sun. For the ancient Egyptian, all life depended on the sun. If the sun did not rise, it would be endless night and everything will die. Over thousands of years, Egyptians evolved elaborate ways to make the journey of death predictable and help guarantee a life everlasting. This quest for immortality is at the very root of Egyptian civilization. The journey for the afterlife to the ancient Egyptian was real. It was their life. It was everything. Guaranteeing eternal life meant massive numbers of people and resources had to be organized. Armies of workers had to be fed. Artists had to be trained. I actually say that pyramids and tombs built Egypt because their idea about death and the afterlife and immortality made them to create great architecture. Over time, they laid the foundations of a civilization that lasted 3,000 years. Everything starts in the tomb. Tombs, whether they were for kings or for nobles, or anyone else for that matter, they recreate the cosmos and they act as basically resurrection machines whereby the king's spirit gets to be reborn and refused into his body so he can live forever. No other tomb in the Valley of the Kings sets out to achieve that